Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how we can add a particle emitter to any title in DaVinci Resolve 15. So the idea here is that you'll be able to take any of the titles from the effects library and add in a particle emitter in whatever fashion you want. So it could give you a result that looks something like this, though if you want to get a bit more complex it's certainly possible to do that as well. So in order to modify your title with a particle emitter you're going to have to work on the fusion tab. But first, let's get started by adding a title to our timeline. So the titles can be found in the effects library, top left hand corner of the edit tab, and then you scroll down to titles down here. We can take any of these and modify it. So let's do this one, title square line tilting text, which if we select and zoom out here a little bit, looks something like this by default. So we already have some controls for modifying this title in the inspector, such as changing the text inside of the title and the color that it's displaying in. But to modify it further, we need to go over to the Fusion tab. So at the bottom, Fusion is right next to the Edit tab. And when we open up the Fusion tab with that title clip selected, you're going to see Media Out, and you're going to see a group with the same name of the title that we just added to the timeline. So if we double click on this group, you'll see a whole bunch of these nodes, which connect to each other to generate the title effect that we already see there. So these nodes, when combined, give us the boxes that you see in the title, the text areas, and they all merge together into one final effect. Now rather than messing with what's going on inside of there, I'm simply going to take this pre-generated effect and merge that with a particle emitter. So to create a particle emitter, don't have anything selected, and then you go over here to where you see a lot of these little dots. There's three particle related components or nodes here. Particle emitter, uh, particle merge, and particle vendor. So particle merge will allow you to combine multiple particle emitters into one node. And then particle vendor will take those effects and be able to spit out an image that can be output to your timeline. So we're just going to use one particle emitter here in combination with a particle vendor. So when you have one node selected and then you click on another node, if they're compatible, you'll get an automatic linking between them. Alternatively, you can click on the square here and drag it into the particle vendor to connect the nodes. And then next, we're going to need one more node, so I'm going to right click and do Add Tool, and then Composite, and Merge. So with this merge, we want to combine the original title effect, and we want to combine the particle vendor. So this combines them into one node, which can become our media output. So this is roughly what your node composition should look like. A particle emitter, a particle vendor, a merge node, and then you tie in your 3D title effect into that merge node, and you output that to media out one. So now if we take a look at the preview window here, note that media out is the node that's selected in this preview window at the top. We can see that there are in fact some particles showing in here. And if I was to play it back, it would look something like this. They just kind of pop up on screen by default with no velocity. And they're just a tiny little white dot. So you probably want something a bit more interesting than that. So we can modify how the particles are gonna look on the screen by clicking on the particle emitter and playing around with some of the settings. So when we have the particle emitter selected, you'll notice that some controls or handles pop up here that we can manipulate our particle emitter with. So the first thing I'm gonna do is click on the green arrows and drag this down here to the bottom because I want the particles to emit from the bottom, not the center of the screen. Uh, next, I'm going to change the number of particles that are being emitted from 10 to two. Uh, that doesn't mean two particles, it's kind of more of an arbitrary number. But at least while we're testing this effect, I want it to render quicker. So the less number of particles that are currently being emitted, the faster it's gonna run on your computer. If you have a supercomputer, feel free to leave that number higher before you render your final effect. So next, if we want these particles to move over time, we're going to want a set of velocities. So in the inspector with particle emitter selected, I'm expanding the velocity menu here. And then I'm going to set a default velocity. So I'll set it to something like 0.15 for right now. And I'll also drag this a little bit up so we can see exactly what direction it's traveling in. By default, that goes to the right, but we can change which direction, but we can change the direction which these particles have a velocity by controlling the angle. So if I change the angle here from zero to 90 degrees, that should make the particles emit upwards instead of to the right. So we should be able to play this back a bit and see the particles get emitted upwards over time. So that's a start but obviously we have a bunch more controls to play around with here. For instance, if we go over to the fourth tab, we can change the emission region from a sphere to something more like a line. 
So with the line region selected, we can have the particles emit from a line. So that could be an angled direction or it can be a flat horizontal line or a vertical line. So we'll change this to a vertical line that starts at the bottom here. So I'm going to control the start and end points here for the line until we can adjust it to basically be at the bottom left corner and the bottom right corner. So that's a reasonably straight line, but we're going to want to change the values to be a little bit more on point. So whatever the start Y offset is, I'm also going to make the end Y offset. So there's still vertically the same distance from the center of the screen. So I'm going to do negative 0.28 and I'm going to set that for both of them, negative 0.28. Okay, so now if we play it back, we'll get an even distribution of particles being emitted on this line in the upwards direction. So let's zoom in a bit so we can see it. And you should be able to see a couple of little white dots here. Uh, to make these white dots a lot more visible, though, what we should do is go to the third tab over here and change the style of these points from point to blob. So when we have our emission particles set to a blob, we'll be able to control the size of those blobs. So I'm going to bump this up to something like 0 0.15 or 0 0.17. And now when we hit play and we look at those blobs, they should be a little bit bigger. We can always make them larger though. So 0 0.33 and the blobs should become very large. Easy to see here. If we zoom out a bit, I can still see them a little. Uh, maybe we want them to be very large though, so we can set it to 0 0.5. We can also add in some size variance to make it a little bit more interesting. And we can set a size over life. So if we drag the left side of this curve upwards, it's going to be larger at the start. And if we drag it downwards at the end point, it's going to shrink over time. So by doing that, the blob should be big at the start. And over time, they get smaller and smaller. So that's kind of a cool effect there. Okay, so another cool thing we can do is have the colors of these blobs change as their as their particle lifetime ends. So I'm opening up the color controls in the particle emitter, for in the inspector of course, and we're going to color over life. So I want this to start as a white color, but to add another color that it will change to over time, I need to click somewhere on this uh, lifespan timeline move the little white triangle towards the end, basically setting like a color keyframe in a sense. And then I'll set a nice blue color that the particles will change to over time. So now if we zoom in and take another look at the particle rendering, we should be able to see the colors change a bit over time. And I think I see that, but it's not going very fast. So that probably means that the particles have too much lifespan at the moment. So if we go back over to the controls tab of the particle emitter, we will see one for lifespan here. And we want to shorten that down so that the colors can fully change as the particles fade out while they're still on screen. So now if we take a look at this, it should be something like this. So eventually these particles should fade out. And you want to time the lifespan so that uh, basically the particles fade out at the point of the screen you want. Maybe you only want the particles to be able to admit halfway up the screen. Maybe you want them to emit all the way to the top. So you'll need some combination of lifespan and velocity to make that happen. And we can also add in some uh, lifespan variants so that it looks a little more interesting. Some of them will fade out faster than others. And overall, that basically gives you your effect. So with that combination of settings, we're able to get a pretty cool particle emission going on in the Fusion tab of DaVinci Resolve. Let's take a look at how it actually looks on the edit tab here before we wrap things up. Of course, it'll render at full speed when you actually export it. So keep that in mind. It's going way slower than it would in the final product. So we can see here in this section that is being fully rendered. That's how fast it's actually going to go when your video title is playing. So you may want to slow that down in the end. And you can do that by controlling the velocity. So obviously there's a lot more things you can do with your particle effects. Play around with them. There's a lot of settings. You can also add some keyframing if you want the velocity to start slow, but then as the title progresses, the velocity of the particles gets faster. Things like that are all within your grasp using the Fusion Node Editor and DaVinci Resolve. So hopefully this video has helped you guys to understand particle emission inside of DaVinci Resolve 15 using the Node Editor. So you can combine it with titles or really any video that you want to add particles on top of. But that's going to be it for this video on using particle effects in DaVinci Resolve 15. So I will see you guys in my future video content.